Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to my current kit build. I have two guitars on the go at any one point. Wednesdays is a kit-based build, and Saturdays is a scratch build. And uh, I'm having a total blast with both of them. Now, the title has changed. The name of the guitar has come into being, and it's all your fault. A number of you fantastic people said that my lovely, delicate horns. You can't see my horns. You don't have the power. The lovely, delicate horns on this guitar look like Shrek's ears. I like Shrek. I, I think that was a pretty freaking cool series. Um, in fact, I can't think of many trilogies that were all that good. And that's weird. But anyway, this is the guitar, this is Shrek's little brother, and of course it's going to have to be green. Burn it. Ha <laughs> ha! Yay! In this episode, I am going to finalise uh, whatever carving I'm going to do in the body. I am going to carve the neck, and it's not going to be traditional. Um, I'm also not going to do a torsal twisty kind of thing, but uh, um, yeah, it's going to be faceted. I am also going to make a sliding dovetail backplate because that is what I promised you last week. I found a scrap piece of ebony. Uh, we, we buy a lot of fretboards at Crimson, uh, both for our kit guitars and production guitars and for the students in our guitar building school, which obviously at the moment is currently closed. Uh, but in that bulk, we get a lot of fretboards that are just aren't good enough, shakes and cracks and nonsense. You can hear here. You hear where the difference is? That means there's a crack in there and it's going like that. Uh, I can, however, use the top half to make this. And we begin. I need to sort this headstock out and it needs to match. It really does. One of my favorite tools. The trick to drawing nice curves is having your hand uh, in one place and support it while you're doing it. So what we essentially have, I need a, I need a veneer on this, don't I? Or if I don't have a veneer and we just carve it, I'm not so sure. Nope. No, just stay with curves then. No. Looking at these things from a distance is always good. So if you can, hang it up on a wall and see what it looks like. Too pointy? Probably too pointy. I'm gonna leave this for now. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not feeling this. I have found a scrap of flame sycamore. I'm gonna thickness that down and I'm gonna glue on a headstock in it, and we'll see where we go after that. If I'm going to make the headstock look anything like the body, I'm gonna need all of these little cutaways and bits of gorgeousness, and the, the way they go through into the body and into the, the sapili, that will need to be matched in. So yeah, headstocks, mm, it should be something like that, really. Which can be done, it certainly can be.
Yes, I wasted a lot of material getting it that thin. That was scrap maple anyway, and I couldn't really use it for anything else in any case. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna glue this in, or on, up. I'm gonna glue this up, and we will see. Oh, hold on. That's what happens when you get distracted. Do I want to cut truss rod cover? In any other guitar, I would go and sort of do a nice drawing and have a shape here, etc. And that would be it. But I'm thinking with everything else that's going on and the other shapes I've got on the body, I could actually just glue this in place, carve through and then have make a feature of that as well with maple to sapili, etc. And that, that, that could be quite cool with, with no cover required. You don't have to have a truss rod cover. Um, I'm gonna do that. It's also easier. That was inside out for the, uh, to act as a mold clamp for the acoustic build I'm doing at the moment, uh, the Nebula. Useful feature. And I apologize, that's a dog that is locked out and wants to get back in. But no, she ain't allowed. Okay, I'm gonna let this to cure. And in the meantime, I'm gonna crack on with making a sliding dovetail backplate out of ebony. So the point here is to create a, a dovetail on the piece of ebony, like so, and a dovetail in the body, and the ebony will slide from the end of the guitar and essentially lock itself in on three faces and as a, an added benefit, look incredibly cool. It's self-locking, therefore only, in fact, it's just a couple of magnets will do to hold it in place. Uh, the only thing I need to do then is play around with some dovetail router cutters. Uh, this one does not have, does not have a bearing on it. So in order to route this, I'm gonna have to take a bearing off another router cutter, install that. We need to make a template as well that's the right size, and then hit it with a hand router. In order to make the template, I need to know how wide the board is gonna be. So I'm actually gonna make that first. Let's talk about this again. So I have a router cutter, it has a bearing on it, and I can use that with a template to, and a hand router to very easily route a cavity with a with a lip that will hold the sliding dovetail and that's relatively straightforward the next thing to do is to put that dovetail onto the piece of ebony that i want to hold in there i can do that on a table saw i can change the angle on the on the, the saw and i've got that capacity with the triton here i can do that with this router bit in a router table uh, and a fence etc or I could just do it with a hand plane. Which of the three options do you think I'm gonna go for? Yeah. I got turned around when I was drawing around this and I needed to, I needed to draw around the, 
the larger side. There we go. That'll do because of how this is going to be undercutting. Like so. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, slightly wedge shaped, which is good. Onwards. I would normally say run a test first, but I'm not gonna. This is the first time I've used this router in this workshop. I'm sure of it. That was all, all tied up for transport. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, let us get changed. I love the quick change. I've, I've now been using Triton routers for, I don't know, it must be coming up on a decade. And I, I love them. I, I just love them. Check it out. As long as your depth stop isn't locked in or your, uh, your power button isn't in, you pull that out. It locks the spindle and it takes seconds to change your cutter. None of that fiddling around that you get with most other machines. How's that? And done. Isotunes, eye protection. I do not have a dust extractor close enough that I can hook up to this. I'm only taking a very small amount of material, so I'm not too worried. And then I'm, I'm due a cup of tea anyway. It's, uh, it's after three o'clock in the afternoon, so tea is, is the drink of choice. I'm getting old and need sleep. Uh, but yeah, there we go. So I'm doing this without dust extraction, but uh, It'll be over quickly. So I've got the depth stop set. That's not gonna go any deeper. I've also locked it off because I can go in from the side and I'm gonna take very, very small passes as I go. Okay, I need to stop talking before I do things uh, because sometimes things go wrong when I suggest they might. <laughs> so what has happened is that bearing moved up, bump, and just in this little bit here, unfortunately, it's gone in too deep. So the, the, <sighs> the shaft of the cutter has been acting as my bearing now and ran along there, which made it too long, but it also, went in there. So I am going to have to just carry on uh, using the shaft now and I need to make another one of these or at least make that bigger somehow. I could pretend that it didn't happen but there is a lesson. Listen to yourself. Run tests first. Can't believe it. So here's where we were. Little bit of play, but uh, that would have locked in there and then magnets or screws. Uh, as it is, I'm gonna have to remove all of that and add a couple of millimeters of material onto the edge of this. Racing stripe, anyone? All right, we're there. Sorry, no shouting. Uh, yeah, we're there. We're done. It's fine. There was a mistake. No issues. Um, I was joking about racing stripe, but actually I think I'm going to do that. Uh, I think just a little strip of flame maple on that edge. <coughs> Stain green. 
Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes hide the mistake. Sometimes turn it into jazz and accentuate it. Hmm. The astute among you, and there are many, will know that uh, my round router cutter will not have cut the inside corner uh, very nicely. I'm going to go in with a chisel now. <laughs> I love this. I had no idea this headstock veneer was going to come in uh, quite so useful. <laughs> Excellent. It's the right size. Uh, I am... I'm just going to super glue this. Uh, it's a perfectly valid glue. And... Fine. Okay. Medium thick. We are going to be stocking this star bond super glue. I absolutely love it. I need to tell you, the great guitar build off 21 has launched. Uh, entrants are open and uh, it's already within one day got more entrants than last year. This is going to be freaking epic. Uh, I also figured out what I'm going to do. Where do I put this damn clamp? I need to figure out where to put the clamp first. Okay, anyway, music. Banzo. I should be removing I should be removing the material from the ebony because I want my maple to be dead straight. Maybe I shouldn't be building guitars today. Hmm. So I'm putting the pressure on the front of the plane because I've made a little bit of an angle there and then essentially I should just make that angle bigger now. The whole thing needs to be a little bit more wedge shaped than it currently is. I like it. Always put your tools away. That's an order. I love it. So, well, let's bounce all the excess off and sand it down and there's gonna be some carving involved and uh, all sorts of stuff. That's the side I cut. The edges are wedged, aren't they? The edges of the guitar are wedged as well.
That was fun. Was it not fun? I think it was fun. So, here we go. We're done. The edges are, well, obviously there's a little bit of fluff there to get rid of. There's sanding to do and all that jazz. Come on, you're on camera, behave. And uh, that side, it's lodged in. There is, there is sandy to do, it's a little bit proud in places. And then once the magnets are in place, it's just a case of dropping it on the floor, just like that. Now you can see my dirty floor. Ah, so embarrassing. I never work with animals, children, or luthiers. What do you think? Let's go and grab that next, shall we? There we go. I'm just gonna get rid of the excess and then we'll see what we've got. Drilling the tuna holes through from the back once you've glued a veneer onto the front is somewhat stressful. I am using an incredibly sharp, very, very high quality drill bit. This is a, a Star M bit from Japan. It's Workshop Heaven uh, is where I got it from in the UK. And uh, they're fantastic, very sharp, very, very good. I am pushing down with a lot of pressure onto a piece of waste plywood. If I was just pushing straight through with nothing else to back it up, I would worry about tear out. In fact, even doing it this way, I'm still worrying about tear out, but I'm not gonna get any. This is a prime example of when you are in the right mode, when you're in the right mood, what needs to happen just happens and it seems to be almost effortless and just it just does what it's supposed to do and immediately the, the shape that this headstock needs to be has come to me i might not cut out this central sound hole stroke truss rod access section i'm not entirely sure i am going to be leaving this for the evening and immediately breaking one of the first rules of this series which is do each episode in one working day um, my working days get interrupted a lot so hey i'll be back tomorrow but the base shape of this headstock is correct and i'm happy with it so uh, well see you in the morning I'm back, I'm happy, I am freshly coffeeed up, and, and I really like this headstock. I'm gonna carve this neck. The headstock is fairly traditional, I'm gonna bandsaw that off, then use the most used machine in my workshop, the Triton Spindle and Belt Sander, to get to a final shape. I am debating this central section here. I really like the idea of hollowing the headstock out, done well, it's very cool, done poorly, well, you have structural issues, etc. But uh, that shouldn't, I'm, I'm not worried about structural issues. Uh, I want to have as few square edges as possible to match the body. I wanna have fun. Can you blame me? Um, now, with the, with the faceted neck, I built something called Odd many years ago, and the neck was literally just uh, two or three facets, and I found it incredibly comfortable, as did about 50% of people who ever touched it. Uh, they all said, hey, that's a little bit odd. Uh, and then the other 50% absolutely hated it, but this guitar is for me, so I'm gonna revisit that and see what it's like living with for a while. I mean, hell, that was many, many, many years ago now. Uh, there are various interesting things going on with, headsto uh, with neck calves. Uh, Strandberg has obviously oh. built a, a name for doing that. Um, and, you know, twists and, and all sorts of things. But uh, I'm going fairly conservative today. Something that needs to be addressed is the thickness of the headstock. I've obviously added about three or four millimeters here, so I need to take off a little bit before I go much further. The average headstock is about 14 millimeters thick, and uh, that works with the average tuner, so it's somewhat important. I'm sure you'll agree.
<laughs> Wrong side. Okay, still that line's in the right place. I like it. Remember, this is the first prototype of the uncut multi-scale kit. And something that's gonna be changing is the square uh, volute line there that came from the factory. Uh, that will be in line with the nut on production versions. When you have an uncut neck, it comes rectangular and somewhat thickness, but not necessarily to the dimensions you want. This is, uh, this particular one is 23 millimeters to 28 or so. I, however, want to start thick and work my way down. This is gonna be fun. So you will have uh, no doubt realized that what I've just been doing is the standard technique for hand carving a neck that we teach uh, in our school at Crimson Guitars and uh, I have done on the channel a lot and that is essentially you create a curve by creating verifiable facets, things that you know uh, make a shape and then you smooth it out. Gouges. But you don't have to smooth it out. For years I've wondered about I-beams are strong. And I've always thought that we could remove a lot of waste material and hopefully create a lot more resonance uh, by doing that, but still have strength if it's in an eye sort of a shape. And I've, I've always thought that would be fun. I'm not doing that this time, but I am gonna remove a bunch of material and see how that feels uh, as you play. This guitar is mine, I'm keeping it, and uh, I'm experimenting and I have left enough material here that if I want to, I can go back and change the shape, carve it into something more traditional. For now though, well. <sighs> Let's see, it's not symmetrical either. I've got one extra curve up here for where your thumb goes around. I know it's not supposed to. Uh, and it's nice and flat on this edge, which actually seems to work for me.
I was wrong. I hate it. Even perfectly sanded. This sucks. Why didn't you tell me? Back to the faceting. Let's fix this mess. All right. Uh, so yeah. Nope. That just it just feels too too weird. There's a reason why. Um, we stick with tradition, and that's because it is millennia of small changes, if that. Anyway, who's that spoke chef got? I'm just going to do what I did before, and we're going to go back to our facets. The neck will be a little bit smaller, which is perfectly fine. Um, it's still going to be bigger than a traditional neck, and uh, <laughs> I'm Back to being happy about what I'm doing now. Uh, the self-doubt is crippling. I'm not sure about this headstock. I'd love the shape, I'm, I'm not sure about that cutaway, so I'm gonna leave this for now. Uh, I'm gonna say goodbye. Uh, click like, subscribe, thank you for your support. Great Guitar Build-Off is up and running. If you are in any way inclined to build a guitar, please enter the Great Guitar Build-Off. Check out the link in the description below. Uh, you might win, and it's gonna be a prize and a half, I tell you. The whole thing is awesome. And uh, the best bit is that, you know, as a direct result of it, we're gonna be able to give away courses and kits and tools and experiences to people who otherwise wouldn't be able to, uh, uh, to get that stuff. So yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, anyway. Thank you. Good night.